That was weird. <laughs> I am back. This is Cass. Um, the next part, I think it's five. I don't know. Either way, we are doing our second date with Matt. Um, and I think I already read this, but Amanda and I walk the short walk over to the coffee spoon. The place is quiet today. Just a few people hanging out and reading books in the little co in the cozy little nooks. <sighs> Rhyme people. Okay, I walk up to the counter and see a familiar pierced face. Hey, you were the dude I yelled at a bunch the other night. Amanda cast a sideways glance at me. Sideways glance at me. He tried to sell me shirts. And who might you be, Miss? Aww. This is my daughter, Amanda, the person I am father to and am very protective of. An honor to make your acquaintance. My name is Pablo. Did I mention that I'm <laughs> that I make witch house music? Hmm. I wouldn't call witch house me house music, but okay. Ugh. A piercing blow to my ego, though not one that will dissuade my need to impress you. My innate dad senses tingle. I, have over I am overwhelmed with a fatherly, protective energy. I must do something to protect my child. I mean... Mm, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Change the subject. Anyways, Paolo, I didn't know you worked here. Uh, yeah, man. Today's my first day. Matt's still training me. Lupin? Huh. Matt comes out from washing dishes in the back room to meet Amanda and I. He and I high-five, as fellow cool people do. Hmm. I see you've met my newest employee. At your service, although I'm only here until the Vacant Veil vale starts their world tour. Or vacant Veil. Vale. I don't know why I said it like that. I have such issues. When's that? Well, we have to put out a record first. Hey. All right, Pablo. Now, what do we do with customers again? Right, yes. Pablo clears his throat. <clears> throat> Hello, good folk of Maple Bay. Can I interest you in a tasty caffeinated beverage? Ah. A smashing pumpkin spice latte, please. Classic. And you? Mm. Father John Misto? Okay. A Father John Misto, please. That would be the worst pun I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, it's pure comedy. I got no fucking hearts. Whatever. Hey, puns are the highest form of comedy. Hey. Oh, I got hearts. Oh. I was making a joke off Father John Misty has an album called Pure Comedy. This isn't real, right? I don't know shit. And the drink is named after Father John Misty, so I was, yeah, never mind. I, that one, what, what? Was that the thing? I don't get it. Okay. Coming right up. Pablo gets to work making our drinks while Matt observes him. Hey. Pick up the hand of it. For a goof for as goofy of a dude as he is, kid works hard. Hey ma'am, that concert was a lot of fun. We should hang out again. Oh. Hell yeah. Oh. I'm actually gonna be done training Pablo in a couple hours. I'm just gonna go record shopping. Wanna come along? Book yes, absolutely. Hey. Pablo brings us our drinks, and, and Amanda buries herself in her laptop. I spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes with Matt. Last time we hung out, he told me that he had trouble hanging out with other people. But for some reason, he and I can talk and joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel really comfortable around him. Is it weird? Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda. And we start walking to the record store. Hey. Have you ever been here before? No, I mean, we have a record player sitting in the living room, but all I have are two copies of uh, Frampton Comes Alive. I own that, too. I think everybody does, though. Hey. Oh, this should be fun, then. We're going to find you some good stuff. I have a lot of records. I mean, I've reduced my collection significantly, but even the ones I'm... I think I'm keeping... I think I'm keeping 200 to 250, but I I have... I had a lot, and I... You know, it's hard. It's hard. Um... The walls of the store are packed with posters, artwork, stickers, and records. A few people mill around, flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. So, why do people still buy records? Isn't it kind of outdated at this point? Hey. There's a lot of people who will try to tell you that vinyl sounds warmer or more true to the artist's intent. But really, I think it's just nice to collect records. Yeah, very true. I mean, my interest in it is definitely that... Um, to find it's the hunt. I very much enjoy collecting 
stuff and, and finding something I've never found before and getting a good deal on it. Like um, I went to somebody's garage sale once and they wanted to set me up with their kid. Didn't be like, oh, I'm gay, sorry, no. But I was just like, oh, they, oh, you have records? Hi, huh? I entertained them and they ended up selling me a copy of Rubber Soul for $2. Now it might've been five, but that's still a good deal. Um, and I got to go through their collection and it was really fun and you just meet a lot of people and um, it's fun. I quite like it. And if I had infinite room and didn't hate dust and I'd collect them forever, but you know, I've gotten, anyway, sorry I got derailed. Um, yeah. Hey. It's cool that in this day and age, we just have about every song we ever created available instantaneously on our phones, but there's something about holding an album and getting to see the artwork in your hands that I always love. Hey. That too. That's why I try to get as many of the records that I love in physical form as possible. Remember when we were kids and would have to wait around the radio with a cassette tape so we could record our favorite songs? Hey. It made it, it made each listen really special. And mixtapes were even cooler because of how much work they took. Now you just make a playlist. I think the last time someone gave me a real mixtape was in high school. Hey. I look around the multi-level record store and spot some genres. Future Wave, Jungle. An anarcho-punk? Anarcho-punk? Uh, non-sploitation? I have no idea where to even start. Man, this is a little overwhelming. Hey. Here, let me help you find something you might like. If you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? I mean... <laughs> Purple. Hey. <laughs> if you could buy one type of candle scent for the rest of your life, what would it be? Daffodil Mountain, Spring Camouflage Summer Breeze, Spring Creek Fireball, Power Violence Cherry Blossom. They have to do with that. Hey. What's your favorite ambiance sound? Rain, Bowling Alley, Star Trek Bridge, Ambiance, Howls of the Bone Chorus. I mean, it's sad, but I guess I'm not cool enough for anything else. Rain. What's your dream vacation spot? living off the fat of the land in Ibiza? Ibiza? I don't even fucking know where that is, but you know what? I'm gonna go with it. Let's hope it's a good option. <laughs> What's your deepest, darkest fear? I worry that people are nice to me only because they want something from me. I fear that I don't deserve happiness and won't ever get it. What if nobody exists but me? I fabricated this universe, saying you too when the waiter tells you to enjoy your food. Not deserving happiness and won't ever get it. Mm. Matt, thanks for a moment. Mm. Hmm. Huh? Oh, I know just a thing. Hey. Matt runs together into the store and returns holding a record behind his back. He shows it to me. This is Smokey Rolls Down <laughs> Thunder Canyon by Devandra Bonhart. Sounds like what you need is some Devandra Bonhart. Actually, I think everyone needs a little bit of Devandra Banhart or Bon whatever in their lives. Whoa, dude. Thanks for the recommendation. Hey. You're going to have a great time with it. Promise. Matt and I bring our records to the cash register. A young girl with a septum ring and buzz cut stands behind the counter with one earbud in. Usual stuff today, Matt. Hey. Just some light pickups. Matt places three albums on the counter. Swear I'm Good at This by Diet Sig. Forever by Mystery Skulls and Greatest Hits by Remo Drive. Tight. The cashier reins Matt up and hands back his albums in a bag. She stares at me suspiciously. Who's a nerd? What the fuck? How could you? How could- I'm a nerd, but also- That doesn't sound like you're saying it positively. Hey. That nerd is my buddy Lupin. Lupin, the beacon of human charm, is Molly. I get kicked out of art school for storing my panties at the end of every critique. You know, Molly? Too much to tell me. I'm a stranger. Lovely to meet you. Anyway, Matt. Anyway, Matt, is open mic night still on? Hey. You know it. Are the third waves going to do a special acoustic performance? I might see if I can get a few of the girls together. There's an open mic night going on? Hey. Yeah, dude. We do it every month at the Coffee Spoon. Some amazing talent always comes through. Got a flyer for it right here. 
You and Amanda should come by that night. Oh, man. Matt blushes. Oh, man. I mean, if you're not doing anything. Oh, man. Will Vacant Veil vale be there? Yeah, be playing, be playing, bib. Will Vacant Veil vale be playing? If only. I finished paying for my record and we head out of the store. When is this gonna get ramped up? All right, I'm just looking for a little bit. This could be very bro. This could be a bro situation. I want some clarification. What we're doing here, Matt? What is this relationship that we're building together? Okay, man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been in a record shop like that since bands had shag carpeting. Hmm. Now that you mention it, isn't it strange to think of all those weird little musical memories? How do you mean? Well, I think music is a very time and place sort of thing. A song is important to me, not only in that I think it sounds good, but where I was and what I was doing when I listened to it. There's music that reminds me of exes, of struggling through school, of being so poor that I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. All that stuff. And listening to those songs reminds me of those moments of my life. Yeah, now that I think of it, even the pop concert Amanda made me take her to is special to me. I mean, I'm not really a fan of the band, but hearing their songs on the radio reminds me of how young and excited Amanda was. And then that even reminds me of a younger me, going to see my favorite bands in concert with all my friends. We would always go to my friend Cynthia Chapman's house beforehand and smoke pot in her basement like we were so slick. Her parents definitely knew what we were doing. Wait... When was the last time you smoked pot? Matt stops and thinks for a moment. It's been decades. Dude, me too. Where do we even get pot now? Is that even what kids call it these days? Hmm. I don't know. Hey. But I bet I could find out. Do you want to get high and listen to our new records? Um. Yeah, I want to hang out with him. Yeah, yeah, why not? Hmm. Matt pulls out his phone and starts texting. How do you know these things? Hmm. For a few minutes, he looks up and smiles at me. Hey. Ah, Molly's got a hookup. Says to meet me in an alley near the coffee shop. Guys, I don't want to go to an alley. We're in a whole affair now. That's what you, hey. what you do for love, I guess. Okay, if it turns out the feds, you can break it. You make a break for it and I'll take the heat. Just promise me that you'll raise Amanda like she was your own. Hmm. You realize that weed has been legalized in this state, right? I definitely knew that. Hey. But we live in dangerous times. Who knows what lurks in the seedy underbelly of Maple Bay. We could find ourselves on the wrong end of the deal gone bad. Just look out for Amanda. I swear. What? Oh, here's our guy. Coming around the corner of one of those nasty grease dumpsters shrouded in darkness is a lean figure dressed in all black. Um, excuse me, Mr. Drug Man. Hmm. Surprised. Oh, it's that. I knew it was him. Surprised the person almost jumped out of their skin. It's Lucian, Damien's son. Oh, I didn't know that was Damien's son because we haven't got... Do we meet him? I just thought he was a douche. Now I'm so glad we didn't romance him. I wouldn't be want to be involved in this bullshit. Um, yeah. Who sent you? Huh? We're cool, man. We're cool. Says who? For all I know, you could be with the feds. Actually, weed is le... Prove you're cool. What? What? I need to know that you're down or a bull. Mm, show him you're not wearing a wire. Impress him with your extensive knowledge of current drug lingo. Cite mutually assured destruction. Eh. Look, man, we're trying to buy drugs from you, and we know you sell drugs. You have dirt on us, we have dirt on you. We're in this together now. He's impressed. Look, it's fine, I get it. Buzz cut Molly said you were coming. Right. Now that, now that formalities are out of the way, let's make a deal. I haven't really seen him have the little uh, eggplant emoji. Are we not making the right moves? <sighs> Sigh. All right. How much do you want? One. One what? Hey. Yeah. Oh. He means weed, Lucian. Yeah, but how much? Hmm. Uh. We don't know. We, we just don't know. Hey. One? Oh my god, look, here. Take this and give me $10. Just don't tell my dad. Let's all forget this ever happened. Hey. I won't tell your dad if you don't. Lucian hands me a baggie of something and disappears down the alley. I open and take a deep whiff. Smells like genuine drugs. Yes, sir. Yeah, that went smoothly. Yeah, we should get off of public property before we smoke this. Hey. 
Great idea. Let's head back to my place, yeah? Ooh! Though, I'd rather not be under the influence when we consummate our love. That's all I'm saying. Is it too soon to be talking about that? Just saying. I'm just thinking ahead here. Um, I'm kidding. Matt and I walk to our cul-de-sac and stop at a gas station on the way to buy rolling papers and soda. I feel like I'm 16 again. Hmm. Carmen Seed is having a sleepover tonight, so that gives us all the time we need to do drugs. Oh. Awesome! Let's do some drugs! Matt pulls one of the records out of his bag and puts it on for us. I plop down on a comfy leather couch and look around his place. There's a bunch of band posters and his record collection takes up an entire wall. I like it. I like it. There's a plant. He can keep... There's two. He Maybe they're not fake. There's three. He can keep things alive. It's a little minimal, which I appreciate because, you know, he has his instruments. Um, I assume those are books. We're not really seeing any records unless those are very thick records. Um, whoa, what a collection. Hey. Been collecting my whole life. It was nice to finally get them all in one place after being on the road for so much of my life. I had to ask my parents to hold on to them for me. Matt sits down next to me and we lay the marijuana drugs out on the coffee table. Mm. Uh, do you want to do the honors? Please, it's your house. Oh. If you say so. What? Matt pulls out some rolling papers and sprinkles some of the beatnik tobacco onto a piece. He starts rolling it back and forth and the paper breaks almost immediately, spilling drugs all over the couch. <laughs> hey. Never was too good at this. Hey. Matt tries again and is able to successfully roll a nice looking weed cigarette. He hands me a lighter and blonde, I think, and I take it. Well, let's. Oh my God! By the way, I didn't. I don't. I don't know much about drugs, but because I love nugs from Dragon Age, there are many times when I've Googled nug and it's come up with weed, and I was like, "What? Smoke some of that gateway drug. Rip that golf free. <laughs> Smoke some of that gateway drug." Hmm. I don't know if that's what people call it. I laid the joint and inhale deeply. Uh, mm. This is not what I remembered. It's been a while though. Maybe pot drugs have just gotten more potent since the last time I smoked. I pass the joint to Matt and cough a little bit. Should it sting this much or am I just a baby? Huh? Matt takes a hit and his eyes go wide. Mm. That's not weed. Oh God. Hey. Did we develop a taste for meth? No, no, it's... Matt takes another hit and wins it. Hey. Yeah, this is oregano. Yeah, I've, I've smoked oregano. It was not a good day in my life. Um, I don't want to talk about it. I sniff the air. Yeah, that would definitely explain why it smells like uh like a pizza place in here. That little punk ripped us off. Oh. Oh, well, we can still relax and enjoy the music sober. You know what? You're right. Oh. We sit and listen through the <laughs> Diet Sig album that Matt brought. Bought, uh, which is catchy as hell. I look around the room again and see photos of Carmen Sita growing up. I spot a young woman with a huge smile in one of the pictures with the two. Who's that? Uh... Oh, that's Rosa. She was Carmen Sita's mother. She died when Carmen Sita was young. I'm sorry to hear that. Amanda lost Alex at a young age, too. I can understand how hard that must have been. I look around again, spotting a framed gig poster hanging on the wall. On it, there's an illustration of Matt and Rosa surrounded by flowers. The cursive lettering reads, Stillness, Stillness the Dancing. Looks like they played the Sound Garden over a decade ago. Were you two in a band together? Uh, hey. Yeah. That was the reason I was touring so much when I was younger. We traveled the whole country in this rinky-dink little van. It was hard to start, but once we started gaining notoriety and seeing how much our songs meant to kids, it was just incredible. Wow, it seems like, uh, like a life some people only dream of. Hey. It was, and it was difficult at the same time. I couldn't have done it without someone by my side. Rosa and I knew that we couldn't do it forever. The long hours on the road, missing your family, sleeping in the van, all that stuff. Uh. So once she became pregnant with Carmen Cita, we put down roots in our favorite town to play in. Right here. Since she was a kid, Rosa had always had a dream to put to own a quiet little coffee shop. She had... She died before it opened. I'm so sorry. Don't be. I don't know if I should. I'm not really sure what to say. I couldn't possibly count the number of times I told people the same thing after Alex died. Hey. 
Matt gets up to flip the record. Next to the turntable, I notice a dusty piano. Do you play? Uh, hey. Uh, I'm out of practice. I used to jam on the keys back in the day. Hmm. Oh, yeah? I fronted the hottest seven-piece ska band that Eagle Rock Bay High School ever uh, had to offer. Hey. No way. You had a ska phase? Phase? Ska never dies. Hey. Except for a ska meanest manifesto who broke up after the senior talent show to pursue solo careers. Yeah, sounds great. Dude, that's so rad. Matt pulls out the piano bench. Oh. Give me some of that two-tone love. Oh, man. Let's see if I still got it. Oh. I sit down at the piano. <laughs> anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. I start jamming out. How piano rendition of infamous sod that you would play at parties in hopes of getting people to like you. Hey. I don't really remember it. <laughs> mm. Fuck! <laughs> He's mad! <laughs> Shit. Can I undo this? Hold on. I fucked up! I'm gonna reload. I'm not gonna fucking lose Matt's love. You will deal with this. Yeah. Hey. Hmm. Oh. What? Hey. hey. Go with a different answer because he didn't like that. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. I'm jo I'm cheating. Okay. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Hey. Hey. Uh. Hey. Hey. Listen, if you can't take my fucking wonder wall, that's too bad for you. But I still have to, I, I want him to love us, okay? Sorry, it's gonna take a minute. Oh, man. Hey. Oh, man. Hmm. Hey, uh. Hey. 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 Stick to your ska roots. Yeah. Hey, I think I'm doing it. I'm playing ska! Hey. Wait. That was just smoke on the water. Matt, I've forgotten how to play. Hmm. The deep purple is always appreciated, nonetheless. Alright, buddy. Can you top that? I, I mean, um... I don't know if it's I good. shouldn't. Aw, oh, come on. Um. No, I'm... It's been a long time. Uh, should we, uh, should we, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude, but I feel like this is something he's holding on to. And I'm going to be a boob. Never too late to get back into it. Matt, you just sat through a butchered version of deep purple smoke on the water. How much worse can it be? Matt stared at the piano for a second. Finn, get off my freaking computer, you weird kitty. Okay. He loves doing that. Um, he stares at the piano for a second. Mm. Okay. Mm. I'm, um, uh, okay. Okay, good. I pushed it. Matt closes his eyes and runs his fingers over the keys. He breathes in deep and starts playing a melody. If I didn't know that he hadn't played the piano in a long time, I would never have guessed. Matt plays a soft, sweet tune filled with emotion. I've never heard it before. Is this one of his original works? This is so cool. Hey. Matt finishes the song and finally opens his eyes. Hmm. How was that? That was amazing. Hmm. Oh, it's, it's nothing. Come on, man. That was killer. Are you going to pull that out for the open mic night? Uh... Oh, no. I never play at those. Well, why not? You're really good. Hmm. It's just... I just don't do it anymore. I just don't like being up there and alone and having so many people stare at me. It just doesn't feel fun anymore. I can sense that Matt's getting comfortable with the thought of it. I won't push him any further. Alright, ma'am, but I hope you know how beautiful your music is. Uh, Thanks? Hey. Matt and I sit and listen to me more records until it gets late and I decide that I need to go to bed. Matt walks me to my door. Uh -huh. Let's never tell anyone about the rag now, okay? Dia, wait. Can I tell my doctor? I don't know anything about health effects, the health effects of smoking and oregano, and... Hey, dude. I think we'll be fine. Oh. Night, dude. I smile. Night. 
I walk inside and the house is dark, save for the silver, the sliver of light coming from beneath Amanda's door. I knock lightly on the door and enter Amanda's room. She's sitting at her desk with her camera editing photos. Hey, Amanda. Amanda swivels around her chair to face me and slumps lower. Ooh. What smells like a pizza parlor in here? What? Nothing. So, what's up? Mm. Dad, I'm hungry. Me too. Uh. Whoa. Wait, no. Hi, hungry. What? No. I'm dad. Amanda collapses onto the floor. That was that was pure. I promised myself I'd never let it come to this. Sorry, kiddo. You set it up. I spike it down. You're a monster. Want some spaghetti? Yes, please. Uh. Amanda and I boil pasta and heat up sauce in a pan. Well, I boil pasta and heat up sauce while Amanda watches. Despite my best efforts, I'm not able to set it on fire. Mm -hmm. How is record collecting? It was great. Did you know that Matt used to play in a band? Mm. No way. Was he good? I don't know if the band was good, but he played some piano for, pe for me tonight, and it was amazing. Yeah. He played piano for you? Dude. Yeah, brought it up that he should play at the open mic night. That's happening in his coffee shop, but he kind of got weird about it. Uh. Hey, I saw a flyer for that. We should go. It's not too late to start a father-daughter punk band and play a couple tunes there. Hmm. Yeah, let me break out my glockenspiel. I think I only know hot cross buns, but we can work off of the chord progression. Amanda and I have a nice dinner before she goes back to her room to do photography stuff. I end up watching True Life. I'm a house hunter. They're staged an intervention for the house hunter, who's crying uncontrollably over the color of the walls. They know they can paint the walls of their house any color they want, right? Matt saw and is stuck in my head all night. Oh my god. Date complete. We probably didn't do great. Did we get it, B? We're really not good at this. Never underestimate the power of a dream. S? Is an S bad? S for satisfactory? What? What does an S mean? I haven't been to school in a million years. What is an S? Well, it's been a long day. It has. I'm just ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. Why doesn't he like us? <laughs> There's a slow burn. All right. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. <laughs> that kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little close. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stopped. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She, sh she sniffles. I almost had sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, kneeling, hugged, knee, knees hugged against her body. Ugh. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. What the fuck is happening? I'm concerned. I'm not going to leave alone. I'm just not that good of a parent, I guess. Something must have happened. Amanda. <laughs> get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quietly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. I'm concerned. I am a concerned parent. I need answers right now. Who did this? Who do I have to cut? Wow. What has her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. Hmm. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? Uh, no. 
Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever and takes her still frozen burned waffle up before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Well, this is not how we communicate in this household. I didn't raise you to be this way. I didn't do anything as far as I know. I mean, probably, but... Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started crying because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Oh. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the refrigerator a bit and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad? It took me a really long time because I ran out of bread and frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Aww. Huh. This is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing, I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Oh. I guess I should start from the top, so... You know how MRR is going to the fancy art school in California, right? MR. Fuck, I don't remember. I think Emma P is her best friend. Hmm. I guess you're not technically wrong. It's good to have fallbacks like that one. Huh. Anyway, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while. And then I found out from Rosie M that both the, both of the Emmas, Grace, and Noah all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They told me they were busy studying for Calc A B final. For the Calc A B final. Yikes. <sighs> so, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You did, but... <laughs> You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Uh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing, because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept quiet and keep quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. Finn, Finn, you're driving me nuts. Get off my computer. Amanda sighs. <laughs> And then one day, I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Ugh. So I go to the mall anyway, get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos, without me. 
what? Aww. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his armor on MR, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. <laughs> yes, I know. So I storm over there, and I'm just like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does, and MR just, like, glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Gossipy one? Boring one? Mm, boring one. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not the important part. Eh? Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to the shitty day the shitty day and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been, been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on and sorry, I know it's a lot. You still following? Yeah. Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read to you. Amanda pulls out her phone, reads word for word and arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Uh. They were dating in secret light for like months. So I told her that she'd been a really terrible friend. She's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are red receipts. Recipits. <laughs> receipts. I don't know what red receipts are, but I'm going to nod and pretend I understand. My cat is acting bonkers. Ugh. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable. I'm inventing to her about how pissed I am, everybody and stuff. Mm. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me. He's like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. Uh. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. It sounds like your friends suck. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Huh. Amanda. I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but uh. Amanda R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she just stabbed me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected. I can almost, can't, almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Ah. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's stupid to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been appro approximating human feelings the whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously. I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few f nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Real friends don't do that. Yeah. I mean, on one hand, I could say high school sucks. But I think it's a more valuable lesson to understand that even though you're going to miss them in the long run, you'll find better friends. And that'll help you understand what a true friend is like. What somebody who's really a friend is versus somebody who's just convenient to be around for like 10 years <laughs> until they realize that, you know, they're jealous of you or I don't know. That's it's a shitty thing to do. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. 
Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting in the effort to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat the whole cake? That whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yeah? Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Oh, it was moist. <laughs> I'm a poppy. Anyway. Welcome. You All right, dads. we're going to end here because I think this is our final date with Matt. I don't know what happens after. I'm still kind of... Can we see... Can we see how we did on our date? I want to know how we did, but I guess we're not going to get to know. What does S mean? I'm going to Google that. Probably more. But like you said, I just don't remember. If S is for satisfactory, I'm fucking pissed. I worked my butt off, Matt, to be your ideal man. Anyway. I'll see you guys in the next one when we go on our final date, I guess. It, this doesn't seem long enough. I mean, I love the, the daughter aspect, but at the same time, I would very much appreciate, you know, more of a date. Some of the other relationships I know are very, like, you sleep with them first, and but we haven't had that option. And I just want things to go faster. I don't know. Maybe it's sad. Maybe it's wrong of me. I don't know. Maybe we'll do another romance after. Who knows? Um, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, did I make the right choice? Is this just, a, like, um more chaste relationship we haven't even smooched what's going on i feel robbed <laughs> okay well see you in the next one bye guys